uh, team MBs made up of about 20 notified bodies uh, that work under a code of conduct. They share information, they try and standardize any processes that relate to the internal mechanisms of the notified body. Uh, they don't try and sort of um, standardize decisions or standardize interpretations. They, 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 they tend to try and standardize more processes and and actions and activities uh, and decisions rather than sort of the law itself. Uh, the interpretations of law uh, officially come through the medical device coordinating group, uh, which is the competent authorities, not the notified bodies. Um, in there, the proposal for a notified body opinion template. So this is just basically saying, look, operationally, uh, the, the 20 members don't really know what the opinion should look like. Uh, so we'd like to have a report, cheerio. Uh, we'd, like, we'd like to have a report. Uh, so we're suggesting that a group of us got together and have put together this template. Uh, and as you can see from the template, you've got all the administrative provisions about who's the notified body. And then we get back into all of the main elements that, as you can see, are very aligned with the, the sort of the notified, the tough sud application, you know, things like what's the summary, what's the general description, the intent of purpose, and then how have we assessed the general safety and performance requirements, and in particular, things around the design and performance, as we mentioned, that intended use um, uh, statement, and then the benefit risk analyses. I'll, I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, biocompatibility, stability, labeling, micro tissues or cells of human origin, electrical safety software, protection from devices, supply and energy. And obviously the drug delivery part, part will be there in the design and performance validation. That's where we'll find uh, drug delivery, extractables and leachables. We'll probably find that within the biocompatibility statement or stability and shelf life, depending upon you know, what, 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 what's, what we think is covered. And then obviously if we've got devices that are active, uh, we want to protect those um, humans who are uh, now exposed to devices that supply energy or substances as well. So this will be about leakage. This will be about um, um, electrical safety. It will be about the actual substance delivery itself as well. So let's just go into a couple of these areas. We'll go to the general stru structure at the moment. You can see very common information that you saw from the application form now. So back to the general details and also the MDA and MDN code, MDS codes uh, that have been brought together. Uh, we can also see the summary of the opinion as well. So this is delivered as early in the report as possible. So this gives an overview of whether or not the, whether the uh, submission complies with the general safety and performance requirements in accordance with Annex 1. Uh, does it conform to the requirements as outlined in Chapter 2 of Annex 1? which are the design and construction requirements. And have we got the conformity with the um, requirements in Annex 3, which are all the labeling information for use as well. So we've got those three aspects of the GSPRs, so three chapters. Um, and as you can see, then it breaks out to uh, the delivery of that opinion. And here we've got the general description. So this is something you can do now. You know, there is nothing stopping you from preparing this information just because the notified body is going to regurgitate it you might as well make their life easy um, and then from there you can see the intended purpose so describe the intended use what's the therapeutic context of the medicinal product what's the therapeutic indications the risks what are the side effects the precautions contraindications give us all that information so that we can understand the target population and what are the compatible devices uh, and then, as you can see, we're now dropping down into the evaluation. So if you read this statement based on the documentation submitted by the application, uh, the following conclusions can be made for the device part under assessment. And now you can see all applicable GSPRs are identified. Um, for non-applicable GSPRs, they're justified. Uh, the GSPRs listed as non-applicable, so we know what you've not covered. And then the uh, methods used to demonstrate conformity with those applicable ones, the harmonized standards and solutions. So again, really, really nice format for you uh, to follow. 
to, to, to start to build your own technical documentation around this, around this document. Um, and then as you can see, we've then got these um, placeholders for commentary uh, with respect to the various GSPRs that are applicable. And, and of course, um, a summary of all of the evidence that will have been submitted. And of course, then the recommendations to the competent authority uh, with respect to, um, you know, if, if, uh, if, if the device is appropriate. Uh, there might be some concerns, uh, such as full, like shelf life. Most are through uh, Arrhenius calculations using sort of accelerated aging models. Uh, so there might be some concern about getting real-time aging data as well. So having a real-time plan. Um, there might be some concerns about certain um, usability issues uh, that might now incorporate into the opinion uh, some sort of um, ongoing monitoring uh, surveillance or sort of post-market surveillance uh, that might be obligated at the market authorization holders as, as part of the notified body operation. Uh, it might be around changes. So there might be a, more, a, a very, very specific bit around software or around the hardware, the technology. Um, and again, they may, they may speak more about uh, what changes are, are, are in place.